So Lewis Hamilton is leaving Mercedes for Ferrari. Look, we're going to strike while the iron is hot. I think there are six realistic driver options who could replace him at Mercedes. So I want to go through the merit of each of them and come to a conclusion. Who will replace Lewis at Mercedes in 2025? Let's talk about it. Option number one, Carlos Sainz. Look, a straight swap, Hamilton for Sainz, it would certainly be, I guess, the cleanest because, you know, these are both two very experienced drivers. Obviously, Lewis's experience way extends beyond Carlos's, but Carlos has been around for a good amount of time now. They've both been in relatively equal machinery in recent years. Carlos obviously got the win last season, uh, something that Lewis hasn't done for the last two years. And certainly for Mercedes, I think they would be getting a replacement who would actually work quite well. I think George would beat him for sure. I think Science would be a number two, but not by much. I mean, I rate Leclerc above Russell for sure. Obviously, Russell's been at that team for a long time now. Science would have to come in and get on top of that car. But to be fair, Science did a really good job coming into Ferrari and getting on top of that car, coming into McLaren and getting on top of that car as well. I think a science move to Mercedes ticks a lot of boxes from Mercedes' point of view. For Carlos, though, I don't know. It's a bit of a sidestep, ultimately. Lewis is clearly taking a gamble on Ferrari here. He's seen in his twilight of his career, he's seen an opportunity to go to Ferrari to get that move done that he's mentioned before that he would have loved. He's seen now, well, what's there to lose, right? It's a straight 50-50 almost. If anything, I'd back Mercedes to be a bit slower than Ferrari in 2024. Just from, from his point of view, you know, all the links to Audi. If Ferrari have ultimately kind of pushed him out, which is what it does sound like here, it sounds like they're pursuing Lewis rather than Carlos choosing to leave of his own volition. Maybe it's just time to go to Sauber, have that one season where you're in that stupid team name nonsense, right? And wait out Audi 2026 you get a year under your belt working with the, that team ultimately right is it worth just taking that move I think for Carlos if he's really thinking long term and leading that team ultimately I think that's the problem for science if he could move to Mercedes and George Russell wasn't there it's a different conversation but George is is very very entrenched into that team and even more so with Lewis leaving now could I see it probably not but I think for all parties, it would work pretty well if it was to happen. Option number two, Alex Albon. So we know Alex's contract is up at the end of 2024 at Williams. And I mean, this move has been talked about quite a lot online in terms of recommendations for who would eventually replace Lewis Hamilton. No one saw it coming this early, as in Lewis leaving at the end of 2024, but I think Albon's been a name that's been brought up many a time and for good reason, right? He's, what, he's going to be 28 by the time the season starts, is Alex. He's got a great relationship with George, which, again, I think that driver pairing relationship is, is more important than ever if you're fighting at the front and really want to preserve a genuine title battle, at least in the Drivers' Championship anyway. I do also think that Russell is better than Albon, okay? And that's coming from a self-confessed Albon fan, right? I think George has been able to show more throughout his career that he's got a tenth or two maybe on Alex. I think that gap actually would be quite similar to the Leclerc science gap that we have now. It's enough, but Alex can still very much be there to pick up the points and, and they can fight together more so than I see Hamilton Russell. I think those egos just clash too much. I think Russell Albon works from Mercedes' point of view. I think he'd be a really seamless fit you know he's coming into his prime as well him and george are very similar age they'd be very well set for a good few years with russell and albon at the wheel and from alex's point of view you know he's been at a williams team now that has very much turned a corner it still has a very very long way to go he's racing with a mercedes power unit in the back anyway williams does share a number of components with Mercedes, a gamble that's 100% worth taking from Alex's point of view. Like surely, the Williams project with Vows at the helm is a super exciting thing, but a Mercedes seat for 2025 alongside his best mate, like that has to be top of Alex's priority. And seeing this move announced, I bet Alex right now is making some phone calls to his agent 
You've got to be Alex, come on, surely. The only way this doesn't happen is if Alex sees a more compelling project elsewhere. Perhaps Aston Martin, he goes in alongside Alonso, replaces Stroll, sees that project, him leading that project long term. Because I do think Alex would be going into a Mercedes where... Yes, George is his mate and all that, but he's going to be expected to be the number two. I don't know if that works for Alex. And I think he'd back himself to beat Russell. I just think Russell would have just about enough to edge him out over the course of a season. Option number three, Esteban Ocon. Now, of course, Esteban was, and I believe it still preserves some kind of management from Toto and or Mercedes, even though he's an Alpine driver and has been part of Renault since, what, 2020. Toto knows what Esteban is about, what he can bring. I think Ocon and Russell would be chaos <laughs> in terms of teammates clashing. Because, I mean, they've both got a history of it. Let's be real. I think this would be a chaotic move from Mercedes to bring Ocon in. But two very quick drivers... You know, on merit, very, very capable individuals. I just think you'd be bringing the same problem that you had with Hamilton and Russell. Just this clashing too much. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd love to see it. The entertainment value, I'm sure, would be box office. But do I actually see this manifesting? From Mercedes' point of view, I can't see it. I think, there's, I think Science and Albon would both be better options from their point of view. But don't get me wrong, from Ocon's point of view, oh, Esteban ring ring look in my predictions i said that esteban should leave i said that he should leave for williams but i mean if mercedes seat is available then he should be gunning for that 100 percent. that alpine project is not the one going thought forward i think the management changes there and i think gasly coming in and if anything outperforming him in his first season as well and gasly's popularity in france is, is much more marketable driver i think ocon should be looking elsewhere you know he'll have done four full seasons at that team and they've not really gone anywhere if anything they've gone backwards i think science is the better option obviously ocon's a bit younger than science which kind of plays into it. Ocon's actually younger than Albon as well. But I just think that there's too much chaos. Option number four, Kimi Antonelli. Now, of course, a lot has been made, rightly so, of Kimi Andrea Antonelli. Andrea Kimi Antonelli? Yeah, it's that way around, isn't it? The young man has been ripping it up in junior formulas, 17 years of age, jumping into F2 for his debut season this year, Jumped F3, didn't even bother with that. Straight from Frecker into, into F2. The hype is, is understandable. He's got a year in F2 to really put himself on the map. I mean, there's so much expectation with him to actually deliver on that expectation in a stacked F2 field with, you know, Behrman, Miata, Hauga, Victor Marta. It's going to be a tall order. And if Kimi can rise to the top in these new 2024 spec F2 cars, and actually deliver the title, wow. That is a serious, serious driver. Potential's a dangerous word, isn't it? Can he fulfill it? Can he carry on this momentum? I really hope so, because right now he's looking generational. To get him in for 2025, I think from Mercedes' point of view, I mean, he's not even turned a wheel with an F2 car yet. So they need to give him some time to actually bed into F2 and see how he does. The problem with that is that then you're allowing time to pass in a driver market that, well, we thought it was volatile, gonna be volatile anyway with 13 drivers out of contract. Well, Lewis is in contract and he's already moved. So let's just rip up, contracts don't mean anything basically, right? The more time goes on that they don't sign anyone, Mercedes, the more opportunity Albon gets to move to Aston or Science gets to move to Sauber or Ocon gets to move to Williams or whatever, right? This is the difficult situation because Mercedes could just choose to write, yep, we're just gonna wait it out. We're gonna bank on Kimi Antonelli being that guy and being there by the end of the year and then getting him in. Promoting someone too soon is risky. It works for Verstappen, but I think he's the exception, not the rule. I mean, Albon's talked about how he felt he got that Red Bull opportunity too soon, but he just couldn't turn it down. Gasly's probably the same as well, but then that's Red Bull. That's a very different environment and very different pressures, I imagine, from management, I guess, towards these drivers. And Kimi Antonelli, man, the thing is, even if he's not fully, fully ready and you chuck him in in 2025, is that a bad thing? Like Piastri, Norris, we could end up with quite a similar dynamic with Russell and Antonelli. You know, in that first season, Piastri had his highs, 
ultimately Norris was the better driver over the course of the year and that showed in the points, that showed in the qualifying head-to-heads. But Piastri took those opportunities to really shine and showcase that, you know, he deserves to be here. Kimi's already got super license points, by the way. If, if they know now, right, you're going to be in this car in 2025, they can give him more FP1s, they can give him more old seats, and they can test the 2022 cars now, which is huge. Mercedes should have Kimi in a 2022 car at every possible opportunity because unlimited test in those ground effect cars as well that's like super helpful to a young driver's development in this new generation of car because actually the more i think about it, the more i think well you know if they put him in the 25 they're going to get a one two dynamic at least at the start and then they'll see how they maybe that does actually make a bit more sense than i thought initially option five fernando alonso fernando has been linked with leaving Aston Martin before and he wasn't very happy about it he, he pushed it down Fernando's a clear number one at that team at Aston Martin but Alonso Russell I think that would be the best driver lineup in F1 and I think they would work together actually well them two really have a really good relationship there's something about this that's that's calling out to me now is it worth Fernando leaving this Aston Martin project going to Mercedes when the Aston's already almost there this would be a huge marketing move I and mean, i'm looking russell alongside science russell alongside album russell ocon russell antonelli russell alonso i think russell alonso's the best lineup not just individual talent the best pairing together i just think that would work madrid grand prix coming in 2026 as well all of these drivers outside of kimi antonelli should be thinking about kimi antonelli being like right well if i take this seat am i only going to have it for a year maybe two and then they'll want to get Kimi Antonelli in. Do Mercedes put Kimi in the Williams? Blah, blah, blah. If Mercedes just go with Kimi now, they avoid those potential headaches in the future, but also they could be leaving some top quality talent and potential driver's championships and constructor's championships on the table by taking Kimi now. With Alonso, you know he's going to extract the ceiling of that Mercedes. And to see him and Russell in the same team at a Mercedes could well be the second best car in 2024, maybe. Oh my goodness, that is a beautiful thing to think about, okay? <laughs> like, come on. This is crazy, we're even considering any of this, Lewis. Your chaos, I love it. I love this so much. John Ilkin, forever sir, thank you. I'm, I'm a happy boy. I'm still shook by this whole news, I've got to be honest. Option number six, Sebastian Vettel. Now look, this is a crazy one. This is very out there. I think Vettel would be a little bit rusty. I think this could be similar to Schumacher's return in terms of the level Sebastian's able to deliver. I think George would very much be number one driver. I've said this before and I'll say it again. You know, having two alphas in a team, two number ones, does not historically lead to good stuff good things you've got a clear one-two dynamic it will be huge from a marketing point of view german driver in a german team you know he never drove for mercedes and you always felt that that could have happened at some point but it never did wait until antonelli's ready even just one year of vettel in 2025 vettel could be a really good kind of stop gap to just give kimmy a little bit more time because again rushing kimmy antonelli into this opportunity it could work amazingly it could absolutely flop so those are my six options. Oh, who would I replace Lewis Hamilton with at Mercedes if it was up to me? Tell you what, I predict that Mercedes will replace Lewis Hamilton with Alex Albon on the basis that Kimi Antonelli will replace Alex Albon at Williams in 2025. That's my prediction. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. My name's Tomo. Thanks again. Have a good one. Ta-da.